Hi everybody, so today we're going to talk about disassociation attack and um, this is basically where the um, endpoint is getting attacked, the Wi-Fi router, let's say for example, is getting attacked and it is getting knocked off and as a result your connection is not staying. For example, uh, it, it tries to connect, gets knocked off, tries to connect, and so on and so forth. So this is an attack that's a form of a DOS attack that is performed. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you how to do this in the Wi-Fi Pineapple, which is a very easy to use interface. And it's going to be um, a quicker methodology than, let's say, using something like Kali Linux. And I just logged in here. Okay, we're in the dashboard, and what I'm going to do is click modules. Now, you would have to download the module to be able to perform this attack. And before I go any further, I just want to mention that this is illegal if you're going to go ahead and perform this, let's say, on um, someone that is has not authorized you to perform it on. Um, it is illegal, so watch this video at your own risk, but keep that in mind. That's very, very important. Okay, if you aren't going to go ahead and toy with people's networks, just let them know. Maybe get it in writing. MDK4 is the one that you want to make sure that you have. Make sure that you download this. And in order to download this, you're just going to go ahead and click this button. And you can go ahead and um, uh, find the link to go ahead and download. So I would also check for updates um, when you are doing this. This right here is the interface. Um, if you wanted to just use the command prompt directly. So what we're going to do is uh, your, your command, automatically you're going to get this as default. The attack mode is going to be, let's say, uh, the authentication, disassociation. Okay, and then the input and the output is going to be WLAN1, MLN, which stands for monitor. And um, what you have up here is a command similar to what you'd see in, let's say, Kali Linux because essentially we are using a program that is part of Kali Linux, except we are using it in the interface um, of the Wi-Fi Pineapple. This, in this case, is version 2.1.3. So at this point, what we want to do, I mean, you don't have to, but let's say you wanted to set the speed in packets. Let's say you wanted a very slow connection um, that your victim is going to have. Let's say you put one packet, and then we're gonna get the lowercase um, um, dash s, and then you'll get the number one. If it was three packets, you'll get the number three here, four, so on and so forth. Speed is up to you, but let's say you wanna set it, there you go. And then what you're gonna do is you are going to, let's say, type the MAC address. So, you know. whatever it is, usually, you know, it's gonna be something like that. Um, so at this point, now I just typed anything in just to kind of give you an idea, but um, what, what you're gonna have here, um, you would have in front of this would be dash capital S, and that's going to allow you to specify the individual MAC address that you want to attack. Now this is if you have um, big plans in mind. Let's say you want to attack everything, um, and then you know just let's say list the um, the MAC addresses that are not going to be affected. Then you would create a whitelist. Okay, see that there, because you're not individually attacking now. That disappeared, and then you would designate the file. Let's say it is forward slash root forward slash whitelist.txt um, and that's how you would go ahead and, and, and do that. Um, you can go to the, the, the section and I'm not going to get into that but you can, uh, you can look to see exactly where you can um, designate that text file and um, you know, let me just show you here. It would be right here. So the cabinet, basically this is kind of a directory. Again, it has a user interface. 
but you would have something like this. So for example, let's say you put it in the root, you would have that as forward slash root and you know forward slash whitelist.txt. I hope that helps to kind of give you an idea. Just don't want to diverge too much from what we were discussing. We're going to go back to MDK4 and we would have to input this then again, WLAN, WLAN, blah, blah, blah. And if you wanted to just read max from the file that are to be tested, you can create, as I said, the file, except this time, these are going to be the only ones that are going to be attacked. And then you would store in the catalog, just as we were discussing, just as I showed you. And then at that point, you're going to go ahead and click start. And then you will see output that refreshes every five seconds. And you will just see continuous text over here. It will say disconnecting, disconnecting, uh, reconnecting, so on and so forth. And that's basically, in a nutshell, how this works. Once again, this is the um, deauthentication um, uh, attack within MDK4. Very, very easy to conduct in the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Now you can do this in Kali Linux if you wanted to. It's very similar. It's just going to be a bit more in depth. Um, and if you, let's say, are performing a pen test for a client, um, you can print out um, directly from the Wi-Fi Pineapple. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier um, to kind of keep track of. So yeah, this is a useful tool even on a commercial level. And yes, even the Mark 7 being the most basic of the Wi-Fi pineapples, um, I find this a very useful tool. But I hope this helped to give you an idea of how to conduct this um, attack. Now, I also want to mention something that is pretty neat and I think that this is useful to know. Now let's say we're going to um, a particular, now I just jumped to the interface of the reconnaissance, the scanning, but let's just say I'm jumping to my router here and then I want to go ahead and deauthenticate all clients. Well guess what? Mine is an enhanced performance router here and you are not able to deauthenticate on my router. So this is one of the ways to prevent this attack on your system, get an updated system, because I have an optional management frame protection enabled. So MFP is enabled on my um, router, which does prevent this type of attack. Now, the router that I have is not ubiquitous at the moment. So um, this is not something that would be the norm, but I just wanted to mention this. If for some reason you wanted to have to prevent this, so to speak, then that's the way to prevent it. Just get, make sure that that is one of the features on your router. So I hope that this helped and everyone have a great one. And I look forward to making some more videos for you out there. Please put in the comments um, any questions that you may have regarding this device. Thank you and have a great one.